In this video, we're going to look at the geometric intuition of the gradient vector. So the gradient is usually the most rapid ascent as we're climbing a mountain. It's the one you don't want to use if you've got a big pack on your back. In fact, if you have a big pack on your back, you'd want to stay at the same height. So here we have just a sketch of what the contours of my mountain look like. As I'm going to the right here, I'm climbing, I've got to expend energy. Now, the rate at which I'm climbing the fastest is going to be normal to two contour lines that I've got here. So H2 is bigger than H1. That means as I'm moving up the hill, I've got to be aware that I don't want to go too steep. So this, I'm going to be moving in the direction of steepest ascent. And you can see from the figure that steepest ascent will be when I'm going perpendicular to contours that represent constant elevation. So let's look at this a little more carefully. And I can actually calculate that steepest ascent, the slope. It's going to be h2 minus h1 divided by this distance, delta s. So let's say the rate of, rapid rate of change is approximately delta s, delta h, uh, delta h over delta s. And delta h is the difference between these two. So let's put that down. Delta H, H2 minus H1. Now, we have the height H of X and Y, and we know from basic calculus that the gradient of H is a vector that looks like this. So we're not explaining where this comes from, but we're focusing on intuition. That's how you compute the gradient vector. What we want to find out is what does this thing actually mean? So for example, when we are climbing our, our mountain, if we move in a direction in the xy plane corresponding to a constant height, we're not climbing at all. So my h doesn't change at all. We already get some in, have some intuition about the most rapid change. So let's look at that geometrically. Let's assume that I pick a direction that's parallel to the x-axis like that, and this angle is theta. So if I'm walking in this direction, then I know that the distance is a simple geometry distance, which we'll calculate in a second. And, but my height does change the same amount, but over a larger distance. So what is that height change? So if this is delta s. We have a right triangle here, so we'll call this uh, L1. And L1 is equal to delta s over cosine theta. That means if we're moving in that direction, parallel to the x-axis, a distance L1, our rate of change in that direction is equal to delta h divided by, this is going to be bigger than delta s, delta s over cosine theta. So I can write the cosine theta there, but you have the, it's in the denominator of the denominator, which goes up in the numerator. And that makes sense because that's the most rapid rate of change, and now that's less. How about in, so this is in x. And in y, what is it going to be? It's going to be going the other way here. Well, this is a right angle triangle, so this angle here is also theta. So now instead of dividing by cosine, we'll have sine. And 
And so the rate of change in this one is going to be delta H over delta S times sine of theta. So if we think of what this is, this is as we make it smaller and smaller, this corresponds to dh by dx, and this other piece here corresponds to dh by dy. If we take the magnitude of those rates of change and square them and add them up, what do we get? So rate of change in the perpendicular direction is going to be this squared plus this squared, square rooted, and hopefully we get that. And that is going to happen because if I take this and I square it, I'm going to get delta H times squared times cosine squared over delta S squared. Get the same here with sine squared, and when I do the algebra, what happens? Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. The common factor is delta H over delta S all squared. And so you end up with this, which corresponds to that. So that shows, in fact, that these terms, dH by dx and dH by dy, are the projections of the rate of change in the maximum uh, way. So that's this angle here onto the x and the y-axis. And that underscores what the books say, is that the gradient vector magnitude gives us the great, greatest rate of change. And we now have seen it geometrically by doing this simple analysis. So in summary, the magnitude of the gradient of h is equal to the square root of dh by dx squared plus dh by dy squared. And we saw that that's the rate of change in the perpendicular direction. And we've given a geometrical argument because this term here would correspond to dh by dx. This term here corresponds to dh by dy. Square them, add them up, and square root, and you get exactly that, which is the fastest rate of ascent. Now, if we're going down the hill, we're doing descent, so that you just multiply by a minus sign. So hopefully, this, this geometry description actually underlines and helps you understand the comment of why this formula is the way it is. Often students get confused because they think that this is somehow related to the vector of descent, but this vector sits in the xy plane. It's only when you take the magnitudes and do this analysis that you see that, in fact, this gives you the fastest rate of ascent. And that's all we have for the gradient.